If someone says go fly a kite, it's easy to picture something like this. But when it comes to the creativity of the heavier than aircraft at the Cape Town International Kite Festival, well the sky's the limit y'all. It's a kaleidoscope of color, a smorgasbord of shapes, an enigma of aeronautical engineering. Anyway, yeah, really cool kites. And there's more to this event than just getting them off the ground. This is an annual effort to raise money for mental health services in a South African capital. Cape Mental Health's theme this year is Courage to Fly, supporting the need to move forward after a mental health diagnosis. Reuters News says the proceeds will provide free counseling, education, and rehabilitation to tens of thousands of people across Cape Town. And one kite flyer from Germany says he thinks there's a connection between kites and mental health as doing this helps his stress fly away. Tonight for Halloween, I hear Friday is dressing up as awesome, but it's not really a costume, just how things are. I'm Carl Azus, welcome to the world from A to Z. Next story, optimism between two rivals and global superpowers. We're talking about the US and China. Their leaders met in South Korea Thursday, their sit down, the last major part of US President Donald Trump's six day trip to Asia. It started last weekend with events in Malaysia, Japan and South Korea. Trade deals, military cooperation, international investment, these were the goals of President Trump's meetings. But the one with Chinese President Xi Jinping was very closely watched because for years their countries have been involved in back and forth tariffs, additional taxes on one another's goods, one reason why their relationship is strained. After their meeting, both of their governments indicated progress was made on trade. A formal deal hasn't been signed. Analysts say there are still issues to be ironed out and the future agreement is expected to have a time limit. President Trump says it would last a year before being renegotiated. But the plan is for the US to lower its tariffs on Chinese goods, and for the Asian country to increase its purchases of US soybeans, which it stopped doing earlier this year, restarting that could significantly help American farmers. China also said it would clamp down on the flow of unwanted drugs into the US, and to relax its limits on exports of rare earth elements. China controls the vast majority of those and they're crucial for advanced technology. Rare earth elements, or REEs, are a group of 17 metals on the periodic table of elements that are used in a variety of technology and industrial applications. For example, in making such things as magnets that turn power into motion for electric motors in EV cars and they're part of manufacturing cell phones, missile systems, and other electronics. The mostly silver-white minerals are actually not that uncommon in the Earth's crust, but deposits that are financially worth the expense to extract are harder to locate. The real rare elements are rare because of the complex process required to separate them from other minerals. It's only worthwhile because there are no alternative materials. But geopolitics makes obtaining rare earths even more complicated and expensive. China is currently the world's largest producer of REEs, accounting for 60% of global mining. But that jumps to 90% in terms of processed output. The two main areas driving demand for rare earths are the magnets which are used in electric vehicle motors and wind turbine generators. Making high-tech magnets is a long and expensive process, ore is extracted from an open pit or underground mine, crushed and moved to a facility where rare minerals are separated from other minerals. Rare earth oxides are then transformed into rare earth metals by electrolysis, a process of chemical decomposition. They are broken down before going through a high temperature and high pressure process. And finally, they're pressed into form as magnets. In a world that's more and more stressed, even something simple like rocks have wide-ranging political implications. This week, President Trump said he directed the military to start testing nuclear weapons. It would be the first time in more than 30 years America did that. The country stopped those kinds of tests because the Cold War had ended with the reforms and collapse of the Soviet Union and because a number of nations had agreed to stop explosives tests and limit their nuclear arsenals. But President Trump says China is rapidly building up its nuclear stockpile and earlier this week Russia said it tested out two nuclear powered weapons. The American leader said quote, they're going to test, I guess we have to test. U.S. House Speaker Mike Johnson says nuclear testing is an important show of strength to other countries and that this is an important time to show it. 
but Arms Control Association leader Daryl Kimball says there's, quote, no technical, military, or political reason to test nuclear explosives. Other critics said doing it could cause U.S. rivals to do the same thing, and they called on the president to specify whether he meant testing the explosives themselves or only the weapons that could carry them. The last U.S. nuclear explosives test was in 1992. A word of knowledge. Which of these famous artworks was completed on October 31st, 1512? Sistine Chapel ceiling, Mona Lisa, The Starry Night, Michelangelo's David. After he worked on it alone for four years, Michelangelo's masterpiece on the Sistine Chapel ceiling was introduced to the public. Traditionally, this is recognized as the date in 1517 when a German priest named Martin Luther posted his 95 theses to a door of a church in Wittenberg, Germany. The bold document criticized some of the practices of the Catholic Church at that time and helped fuel the Protestant Reformation in Europe. This was the date in 1941 when a painstaking American project was finished after years of planning, funding, and managerial challenges, in addition to hard work, Mount Rushmore was declared completed on October 31st. Since then, the National Park Service says it has become a, quote, great icon of American history. And in an act of vengeance, India's first and only female prime minister to date was assassinated on October 31st, 1984. Indira Gandhi had led her nation on and off and on again since the 1960s and amassed a great deal of international respect. But after a violent confrontation between her government and the nation's Sikhs, the religious group took revenge. Our Fantastic Four for Friday include every state that begins with O. Talking about Ohio, in the Buckeye State, Mrs. Hager's class is with us from Pioneer Career and Technology Center in Shelby. Talking about Oklahoma, from Enid, we've got Enid High School with us where the Pacers and Plainsmen are watching in Miss Johnson's class, making a stop in Wyoming to run with the Bronx of Sheridan High School. Hello to Mr. Thomas's students in Sheridan. And we're flying with the Falcons over Bend, Oregon. That's where you'll find Miss McCullough's class at Skyview Middle School. Get a good look at these animals' insides. In the spirit of Halloween, the Oregon Zoo is showing us a slew of skeletons from some of its furry and feathered friends. Check out this radiograph, aka x-ray, of this Amore tiger's paw, showing incredibly cool details. Or sneak a peek at the head and limbs of this gremlin-looking white-cheeked gibbon. These eerie images aren't just here to put us in the holiday spirit. The zoo says all of its animals receive routine checkups, often including x-rays, which allows for lower-risk exams, great healthcare and a unique view at the wildlife. We had a few options for this segment today. How many, Carl? I don't know, maybe six, seven. But teachers, this time, there's a reason behind the screams and groans of your now distracted students. Dictionary.com has chosen those two numerals together as its word of the year. The site said searches for it exploded over the summer, and as far as the definition goes, dictionary says it's complicated. That some say it might mean so-so, or maybe this, maybe that, but that it's, quote, impossible to define, it's meaningless, ubiquitous, and nonsensical. You might be thinking, I, Lexa, cannot believe you'd use such language on your show. It defies terminologic, even on Halloween, to dig up a root word that's so palaverry diction scary. It leaves unreal linguistic expectations to gloss or regroup and focus when we're supposed to be word booked up with well-sourced lessons. But when referencing news and trends on a scale of 1 to 10, it's clear where this one ranks. I'm Carl Izzers for the world from A to Z, and you mean the world to me. Have a wonderful and safe Halloween weekend. <laughs>